Hello, my friends, Katie Day with the Movie to Texas team down here in Houston, Texas, here with another episode of The Real Advice Podcast with Stephen Kim Holmes out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I am very, very, very excited to introduce this week's guest. I was super fortunate to meet this guest through Tom Ferry Coaching, where we initially met through our coach. Um, She got into real estate initially in California and quickly rose the ranks to become the number one agent for Copal Banker in her region in California in 2019. In 2020, after all of that success in 2019, she decided to mix things up a little bit and move kind of across the country to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. She's consistently ranked in the top one to 5% of her market, earning international awards through her brokerage. I'm grateful to know her for her kind personality, her golden doodle, real estate knowledge, and marketing skills. On her website, she has a quote that says that she's relentless, and that's relentlessly positive, relentlessly ready, and relentlessly quick. And after knowing her personally for a few years, I can say that this is definitely true. Plus, again, she has a really cute doodle. His name is Oscar, and he is the absolute cutest. Please join me in welcoming this week's guest, Adriana Pickard. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> Every time we're having like a bad day, I'm gonna like rewind that and tell you. <laughs> um, but welcome. Thank you for joining us today. You are an absolute badass. So I'm excited. Um, and I don't know that Steven knew that about you. Like she's like, oh yeah, I'm the number one agent in this area. So I'm just gonna like pick up my business and move it to another part of the country. No big deal. So I'm really excited to dig in today. Um, I know Steve is as well. Thanks guys for having me. So appreciate it. So Adriana, share with us, you know, before we talk about your, your, your move across the country, you know, why did you get into real estate? For the people who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about who you are and why real estate. So a little bit of backstory, and I'll try and keep it brief for you guys. So I actually owned my own house cleaning business for years. I was doing it personally, and I was just maxed out. I was doing like eight to nine hours a day. I had a full schedule, several wonderful clients. I had hired and fired people. Like I'm a little bit of a control freak, and so if they weren't up to par, I'm like, you're fired. And I just couldn't take it anymore. And so I was like, okay, I just need a change. And I... To be honest, I don't remember the exact spark that got me into real estate, but I remember somebody mentioning this and I wanted something that I didn't have to go to school for, for years and years. I feel like in real estate though, all of the learning is on the other side, right? Absolutely. (laughs) And um, I can remember uh, house cleaning and putting uh, all of my notes, I would record my notes before I would leave for work and study for my test that way. And once I closed my very first transaction in real estate, I just quit cold turkey. And I'm like, okay, sink or swim. So, yeah, that's how I, that, that's my little intro of how I got into real estate. And I've been doing it for about five years now. So, that's incredible. So, that's great. So, it's a little bit more of an unconventional path to real estate because a lot of our guests are like, you know, my mom had, was in real estate, my dad was in real estate. So, which is amazing. Um, your first year in real estate right? You're thrown right in, you quit cold turkey, your cleaning company. What were the one or two major, I, I'm going to say, events, learning experiences that you went through that you'd like to share with people who maybe are in their first year or just about to get their license? Something yes. that really kind of sparked the catalyst in your in your meteoric rise in real estate. So I think for me, um, my very first year, somebody told me, and and again, I was not in coaching. I literally didn't know anything about real estate except for like what you learn on your test, which is just doesn't help you at all. Let's be honest. And I had my business cards and my desk, my free desk at my office, and I was ready to go sell houses, but I had no idea how to do it. And somebody's like, do open houses. So the first year I was doing open houses just nonstop. And then everything I sold that year was just based off of my open houses. Um, So I feel like if there's anything free that you can do, like when you're first starting, like you're just trying to figure out what's up and what's down. If there's something that's free, like do that. Like open houses were just a huge benefit. Yes, like you worked on the weekends, but you didn't have to spend thousands of dollars obviously for it, you know? And if you could like make something look cute and, you know, put your signs out, you were good to go. And plus know some extra stats about the area, right? <laughs> so that's a huge help. Um, and then at the end of my very first year, that's when I got into coaching, just because I'm like, I cannot do this on my own. Like I have so much learning to do. 
Did you have a mentor in your first year, like within your brokerage or someone that you knew that was in real estate that you could piggyback onto or on with? Sorry. So I actually like, I feel super, super fortunate about this. So there was an older woman in my office and she came by my desk. It was probably like the second week when I was at the office. And she's like, if you ever have questions, call me. And she gave me her cell phone number. Wow. She probably regrets it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Sharon, I don't know what to do. But she was like a godsend. And um, I actually paid her. Like I, I just told her, I'm like, Sharon, you can be my mentor. I will pay you good money on my first couple of transactions. If I can literally just ask you any question, and mm. she, it was, it was. I feel again super fortunate that I had somebody that I could actually bounce those ideas off of because you're just thrown out there and you're supposed to figure it out, and that's that's pretty terrifying to be honest. And I think the differentiator in what you just said um, is yes. most people. Are- I think the differentiator in what you just said is like most people are like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to call you for help, Adrian. I'm going to call you for help. You're like, no, hey, I get that you're taking your time. I will pay you off of my transactions for your time. Like, please just help me and you know, help me to succeed. And most people are just like, hey, just help me, you know, tell me, tell me what I need to do and, and whatever. So I think that's, you know, super powerful um, and, you know, to have someone to learn from. You do not realize how many times I call for Sharon, though. <laughs> So anyways, but that was super, super awesome. Like having her my first year was super helpful. Well, that's like the precipice into coaching. So you actually got into coaching quite soon. It's just your coach was sharing at that moment, right? So that's, that's insane. So now, you know, fast forward a year and you come to a point, you're like, look, I need a coach. Mm -hmm. Right. And I find a lot of agents who, who are, who want coaching or want to coach the one thing holding them back is obviously the financial obligation, right? And so you being first year into the business, being like, you know, crushing it, coming to the point that you need a coach, what happens next? Like, how did you end up with the Tom Ferry organization, a coach with with the Tom Ferry organization? Okay, so I feel like this is probably like similar to so many other people though, but like I was literally in making copies in the, in the copy room in my office one day, like, right? And there was this big poster on the wall and it was like, $99, what you say matters. And it would have this big pump. <laughs> like, baby, like, I don't know what to say. Like, this is perfect. Like, I think there's something to be learned here. And <laughs> so, honest to God, like, that was the first time I met Jeff, the first time I met Bill Pike or heard anything about, like, these people that were selling, like, 50 to 100 houses a year. And I was like, what is this? Like, I didn't even know that was a thing, you know? And so I, um, it was one of, I, I signed up for all, I think it was like a three day thing in Sacramento or something like that. And we were supposed to do homework. We had to write out the for sale by owner script. I think Mr. Pipe was like, you do this and you'll win a trip to summit. I'm like, oh my God, I can win something else. So I literally <laughs> home and did the for sale by owner and I won a trip to summit. I no literally way. went to Vegas. And I went alone as a brand new agent and I sat in the very back of the room and I'm like, holy crap, what is this? So, and then that's, right after that, I signed up for coaching. That's hilarious. Um, I had heard that story, but not in its entirety. So I love that. I, I appreciate you sharing. Um, so obviously first year in the business, you said open houses were your main source of business. Um, I know from there, it's definitely evolved and changed. Um, what would you say you kind of went to next after open houses um, and, and over year two and, and beyond? Yeah, so absolutely. So year one, all open houses, which means mostly buyers, right? And I'm like, okay, I think there's maybe still love buyers, working buyers again. Uh, but I figured that there was maybe like a better way to manage your time, you know? So I'm like, how am I going to get these really amazing listings? And I just literally had no idea. So after coaching, I started doing expireds, uh, especially like the older expireds. And that got me into some of the houses that I, I didn't have connections. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I always wanted to sell like the fun million dollar houses, but again, didn't have any connections to that. And so I started out, I partnered with a gentleman in my office for about six to eight months. I said, Hey, look, I'll bring you all the phone numbers. Like I can't close to save my life right now. How about you call? I'll do all the grunt work, but I'll listen and I will learn. And so we got a couple of really fantastic homes under our belt. And then when that partnership ended, I moved on. And then I had the confidence to like call anybody and say, Hey, you know, 
you know, do the expired thing. So that was how I got into listings because I didn't have like thousands of dollars to spend on Zillow leads and, you know, farming these big areas and whatnot. So I was just trying to like, you know, be somewhat frugal, if you will. <laughs> So your your level of like self-awareness and humility is so refreshing Aww. because one of the things that in, in, in real estate, and I haven't been in real estate for like decades, but one of the things that I find in real estate is people get into this profession flexing and, you know, spewing out numbers and statistics and awards and everything. But one of the, the fundamentals in real estate and it, very early on in people's career is like, you don't know what you don't know. And I think for you, you're like, there were a lot of things, like most agents, we don't know what we don't know, but at least you had the wherewithal to be like, look, at least I can learn. And so I'm going to align myself with people who can show me the way or show me the light to, to, to essentially improve your skills, to sharpen your ax, which is, which is incredible. So I just want to say, Adriana, I don't know you very well. I've done my research on you, but it is very, very refreshing to have someone like you on today's podcast. And this is... This is why you're so successful. So thank you. Awesome. But Steve, just to let you know, like from day one, I've been hit on the head with a bat when it comes to like <laughs> stuff I don't know. I, I said, no, Katie, like for real. Yeah. I can sitting at my desk and the top agent at the time in my office, he's like, Do you have your listing presentation ready to go? And I'm like, I that wasn't even on my test. I didn't even know. Like, I knew what this is. And so I'm like, is this like a presentation? Is this an email? Like I did not know anything. So I feel like I've just like had my ass handed to me since day one. So <laughs> that's Anyways. insane. So then you make the switch, you make the move halfway across the country. Why you're doing so well in your marketplace. You're in the top 1% and then you move. Okay, so you know, there's a couple of things. So we've always loved this area. Last year seemed like a great opportunity to make that transition. Um, and I think the other thing, like, to be perfectly honest, the money can be great in this business, but if you're not constantly challenged, you're mm. gonna get bored. And mm. I think that's what, like, what next? You know, like, there's always something to chase and there's always something to push yourself towards. And I'm like, well, if I can make it in California, I could probably make it in Idaho. You know, and so here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Was there something in Idaho that, that pulled you that, that you were drawn towards? Like of all the places you could go, why so, Idaho? Okay, so the area, first of all, like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this area or looked at pictures. First of all, it's like Lake Tahoe on steroids. It's gorgeous, like absolutely gorgeous. And also my husband, like, he always has wanted to move up here, but I always was like, I need to build my business. I need to learn this. And I felt like last year, just again, it seemed like a good time to make that transition that was like, okay, I know how to do the business. I can probably do it again before I'm 60. We should probably consider this so that I'm not worried about it. <laughs> and he loved it. And we have actually just loved it. Like trail running and paddle boarding and boating and hiking and like there's so many other things that we like to do just in life that have really drawn us to this area so so steve if you guys aren't friends on facebook last week we actually ran a how long was the race it the was 11.2 miles it was 11.2 miles and two rounds and it was or two laps i should say with 3800 elevation gain and it's just something oh it was at the top of the ski mountain yeah like which is she crazy. took a no lift to the, to the top yeah. of yeah. a ski, a ski mountain to run a race sorry yeah. was this you or your husband so I, I missed the beginning both. part both <laughs> both <laughs> well, we know both They're, did that so whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> how crazy no, that? <laughs> but again i feel like running is one of those things and you guys exercise so you know it's just something to like push yourself towards and also you need like an outlet for like stress you can't you know what i mean like it's a good way for having something else to do um, yeah that's crazy. it is it is so we, all right you moved to a new market um yeah. You know, obviously you've been there now for about a year, but like, what would be your advice to someone if they're like, okay, yeah, uh, Coeur d'Alene is my dream area or, you know, California is my dream state or whatever, you know, boys want to move to New Mexico, right? So they want to pick up their lives and their business and move mm -hmm. to a new state. What advice would you give them? What are the things that you were like, hey, these work really well. And if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't have done it in this order. What are the, some, some highs mm -hmm. and lows? I think if I had a couple of lows when I first got here, like, okay, backtrack, like 
don't move in the middle of winter. And then, <laughs> okay, so, no, honestly, I moved in October and I'm like, baby, it's going to be amazing. Like, I'm going to go up there. I'm going to get it all set up. I'm going to go like start my pipeline for spring. You come up next year after your job because he didn't move up here until the beginning of this year. And don't do that. Like, don't take, don't do that. Like, come together and make a house together because that was really rough. Like, being in a new area all alone, trying to build your real estate business when you don't know anybody, it's terrible. Don't do that. But what I will say is make a plan and stick to it. I kind of felt like I'm going to be perfectly honest here. Like, I've had some of these and I've had like emergency coaching sessions in the middle of the week, just panicked, you know, <laughs> but if you have a plan and you stick to it and just trust that process, that works every time. And I feel like that's something that I'm still learning. Um, but that I think that that's been my biggest one. Also pick your lead pillars and, mm. and just go, go all in on that. I really, uh, I think right now what I've really been focusing on is, my referrals for my old market, I really tapped into my uh, Coldwell Banker back in California from all the people that were, you know, in the rankings with me, you know, just really working on those referrals, which has been really fantastic because we're seeing a lot of people come to our area. And then also Tom Ferry has been fantastic. I have like 10 buyers right now just from you guys. So you've been amazing. Wow. Um, again, a buyer's agent, and I love it. Um, and then I think the other thing is that this is new for me too, is video. Like, I know they were always saying like, you need to do video. And I'm like, okay. And then I would try and edit all my own videos and it would take like six hours and it looked horrible. And look, Katie has talked me off the ledge on more than one occasion when it comes to video. Like, how do I do this? So finally I'm like, screw it. I just hired somebody to do them. We meet once a, well, every other week and we crank out three videos and we do, you know, whether it's interviews or going around and doing the neighborhood spotlight. That's been fantastic and I have gotten, like I feel like that's really helped with like people knowing where I am. Like Jeff always says, you wanna be the mayor of your town, especially mm -hmm. when you're in a new area. And that's what I've been working on. I have four listings off of that one woman, Katie, that I met who saw me doing my video. Four, she just texted me again this morning, she has another house. So do video, like you may not like it, but just do it. And it's not that scary once you, and then get a good videographer. That's the other thing that I really made all the difference in the world. He makes you feel really comfortable, you know? So. so so, so, let's break this down a little bit. Let's go all the way back to like you said, okay, well, have a plan. Yes. And it sounds so simple, so straightforward. I know we are all coaching clients with the TF uh, Tom Ferry organization. Break break that down. Like, what do you mean by plan? Are you talking business plan, weekly plan, monthly? Like, what specifically both. are you afraid of? I think both. So I'm going to be honest. I really have been working on like my 10 year plan right now. Like I've really been just trying to focus on, on setting that, you know, and what I want and something else to work towards. I feel like the first couple of months here, I was a little bit like, like I said, a little bit up and up and down. So I think you do need a good business plan and you also need to like do that time blocking, like your weekly plan. Like what does that look like? And then also something I'm really learning because I did not do this my very first year or two in real estate was like schedule some time off. Otherwise you're going to like, hate your job, you know, and I want to love it all the time, you know, so having that moment, and that's why I got into running as well. And I know I'm rambling now on you, Steve, but I think this no, all no, time. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but I feel like that really makes a big difference too, is having that weekly plan. Like I have calendars all over and I'm old school, like I have papers here and here. So whatever works for you, like have, a, have that, that weekly and monthly plan as well. That's that's the self awareness piece that I was referring to. V like very few agents can actually identify the fact that like you know what, hey, I do need to time block time. Like I need to, I do need to time block not just for the business but for personal things. Like I remember going to to watch Tom Ferry like a couple of years ago, and he was talking about how he even schedules like time like dates with his wife, and I was like, what? That seems so impersonal. <laughs> I schedule dates with my wife and it's been the best thing because I stay committed. Like we all know if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. But I think time blocking and scheduling is absolutely crucial and ensuring that on a weekly basis, you do spend some time just for yourself because this business is all consuming, all consuming. Um, Adrian, who, who is your coach? Jeff. Jeff so Mays, right? 
Yeah, just me. So Katie, that's how Katie and I met, actually. So we <laughs> you guys are vibing really, really well. <laughs> that's been a fun connection for that. So we actually started by role playing for sale by owners and then we're like, screw this. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, Jeff connected us and, and so we like all hop on. It's it's if uh she me and Ryan all hop on, we're like role playing and we did it a couple weeks in a row. And then one day I was just like, Hey, you know, we're not really calling for sale by owners. Like, this is great, but like we're not actually putting any of this into practice. She's like well, hey, neither am I. So let's, let's roll yeah. on something else. Let's mastermind instead. So now we connect on like, you know, challenges in our business and things like that. And, you know, a, a little bit more accountability and some like expired role play and seller role mm. play and things like that. But we were like doing this because our coach told us to. Because I think, you know, Adrian, you're like me and that like, if someone's like, hey, you should try this. You're like, all right, I'll try it out. Like, we're very coachable about it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so we're just like, we were doing it. And we we're like, I don't, I don't like this. Neither do I. So it was fun. It's so true. So. But they love you, Jeff Mays. You are a phenomenal coach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, cool. Good. If I can make it in California, oh, I think that's just I can make it in Idaho. <laughs> I think that's a song. Maybe maybe we're on to something. Here. <laughs> oh, geez. Sorry, Katie. I was I interrupted you. No, go ahead. I was just going to share that you. comment. It made me laugh. Um, share with us your 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 ten year vision. So you're brand new into Idaho, brand new marketplace. You're getting your your footing. What's what's ten year? What's what's that ten year vision look like for 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 you? A growing team. What would that what would that look like? I feel like I'm a little bit like I I'm always been a little bit different, and I'm not afraid to say that. <laughs> and so I'm not looking to grow a big team. Our area, I don't know that that necessarily even supports it, but that's not my dream at all. I would love like a full-time buyer's agent and like two awesome assistants that can handle all the stuff I hate doing, like little letters at 5.30 on Tuesday evening, Katie, you know, <laughs> things of that nature that sending all of that stuff out. But obviously you put in your time when you, when you have to, and I totally understand that, but that would be my goal is to have like one awesome buyer's agent I'm hoping it's my husband, but I'm not sure. Poor guy. He actually takes his real estate <laughs> on Saturday, so we'll see how that goes, poor guy. Good luck. <laughs> I know. Um, but it was, that's my goal. I would love, I mean, I always, like, anything that has a chart and something that I can work my way up in the rankings, like, that's going to motivate me mm. for sure. Like, I can remember getting, like, the Coldwell Banker, like, the top 25 in the region and, like, crossing off the number one name and you know what I mean? Like all of those things. So I would love to still participate in that. That really just fuels me and it gives me some challenge to work towards to like prove to myself that I can still do it. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Adriana, what do you, what do you see? What do you foresee as the greatest challenge or the biggest challenge for real estate agents, the industry, let's say in the next five to 10 years, like you're incredibly smart human being like you know you're you've done really well in the business like what what do you see what do you foresee being the greatest challenge for real estate agents or teams in the next five to ten years oh geez that's something i'm going to be honest i haven't <laughs> given that a lot of thought to um i think or oh. even for, or even for you like even for you like you talked about the fact that you don't want to major like a massive team i'll be honest with you adrian adrian i was right there with you like a year and a half ago i was like i want one maybe two buyers agent and an admin but then our services How many team members do you have now steven so it's five full-time admin a videographer and then we're just hiring another lctc and we're going to onboard another two agents and well, that's and i didn't i didn't want to like it's funny because we were like, <laughs> right? But I'm just saying. But I'm just saying though, I didn't want it as well. But it came at a necessity. We had so many people in our marketplace who were like, "Help me, help me." And I can see that. And I am open to change. Like Steve, I'll be the first to say, like, if I get inundated with so much business, I'm certainly not going to be like, "Nope, not for me." I would hire at that point, but <laughs> you know. But I think having like. I love the interaction with the client. Mm. I think that's what I love. Like I am really grateful. Like I've had one kind of crazyish client this year. Everybody else has been amazing. And I like get a high off of that. Like helping them connect with that home and helping them feel that sense of like home and those emotions. Like I love that. Like that is like the challenge. Like 
they're looking there and everybody's coming in from out of state and so i feel like that adds even more challenges and i love that part like that yeah. process is really exciting to me and so i don't know like i might be having a big team in a couple of years like that's just not right now on my vision board so uh, okay. <laughs> no, that's amazing that's fair other than california what states are people moving from or uh where are they from Washington, Seattle area, and then Bay Area and Southern California. Those are our biggest ones right now. We're seeing a ton of people like Orange County, Riverside County, San Diego. Like those are big ones right now for us. So I love that. Go ahead. And where? And well, Seattle, I was going to say it's only like a four and a half hour drive. So yeah. people still commute that way. Like my husband still works remotely from California. So that's been a really big, you know, option yeah. for a lot people coming up this direction they're just working from home and we're seeing a ton of that so and it's fun because i feel like i can connect really well with the california people you know yeah been there done that yeah so what is um, it so I, oh sorry go ahead i think it's funny that you also break down california into two different parts right like bay area and right not just like hey they're coming from california <laughs> they're coming from multiple spots in california steve what go ahead is it the cost of living? Like what, like why move to Idaho? Sorry, I, I'm from, I'm from Canada. I will plead ignorance, right? I, I just like, you're okay. You know, here's, here's, here's a little great Jeff Mays plug. You are the digital mayor of Idaho, which is, I know, obviously massive. The entire state, not the North Idaho, state. not Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. But, wh but why move? This would be like, what are the top three reasons why you should move to Idaho? Uh, it's a so I feel like California, I don't know if you've ever visited, but like taxes are just ridiculous. There's just a whole lot of regulation. And I think just last year, like it gave people the, the flexibility and the opportunity to move so that mm. they can, you know, work remotely from wherever. Like we're seeing that, like schools are open. So I feel like there was just that, you know, there's a lot of people that are just coming up here for a different lifestyle too. Yes. Okay. And they have doors. <laughs> They're amazing. Like if you guys, if like for anybody that loves anything outdoorsy, like this is your place. Like it's really fantastic. So that's sweet. Okay, cool. Maybe I will take a visit to Idaho. You're really, <laughs> you're really talking it up. So I've been to California a number of times, but okay. it's super time. cool. You'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I very much know all about those winter moves because real estate in Canada, six to eight months is winter. It's so I'm oh. very, very familiar with uh, with the winter moves. It's tricky. Well, when you're from sunny California, where you're like low is like 50, and now all of a sudden, like I can remember showing land in 18 degree weather here, and I'm like, that's no joke. Like, <laughs> it's just that's really cool. <laughs> um, what what advice would you give? What it, what is this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> is this Idaho? Okay, this is totally Idaho. See, wait, 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 stop, Katie. Go up, scroll up real fast. So my office, so this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is how gorgeous it is. The The big high rise that you see right here on the water is the resort. I work right there. Like, I can see the water from my, when I'm, when I'm at the office. Like, it's amazing. Wow. Yep, right there. So, anyway. Yeah, it reminds me, yeah, it remind, reminds me of British Columbia, which is close to Seattle, so. Oh, just, so, like, Vancouver area? Yeah, yeah. Stunning. That's one of my favorite places. It's a gorgeous city. No, I'm not kidding. It really is. <laughs> Sweet. There's our little Canadian plug right there. there you go. And Whistler. <laughs> are you are you an avid skier? Like, do you like? Ski? We love to ski. Absolutely, we love to ski. So, what is this, Katie? Oh. I have no idea. There we go. Yeah, like literally the little sign here on the left hand side. That's like by my. That's my office. No like, way. Yeah. That is a killer view. <laughs> it's really, really pretty. So. Katie, you're you're muted, by the way. You keep. <laughs> I know. Oh, I thought yeah. you were talking. I saw, I saw your lips moving. Um, Adriana, uh, we just want to. We're we're going to end off with this one question. This last question that we ask all of our guests. You know, I know you didn't want us to throw you any curveballs, but this is one of the questions that it, it, it's a lighthearted curveball. Is what we're is how we're going to frame this so it is your last day on earth and we want to know what is going to be adriana's last meal whether it's a home cooked meal you're going to buy it what is going to be your last meal and uh, why? i think i'm going to have to go with steak i think i would do medium rare and i that's 
I am a sucker for a good steak. <laughs> and I have to say, Katie laughs at me for this, but a good solid glass of Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> it goes with everything. It goes with everything. <laughs> no, but steak for sure. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> no, Katie drinks it. Totally cool with that. What's that? And then even on the barbecue at home, I'm totally cool with that too. So. That's sweet. That's amazing. Well, Adriana, we just want to say thank you so much for sharing um, your valuable time with us. There's obviously a many, many reasons for your tremendous success in your meteoric rise in the real estate industry, wherever you are. Uh, and we can't wait to continue to follow your journey, cheer you on from the sidelines. For those people who don't know uh, about you, where should they go to start following you and start to learn more about the wonderful story uh, that you have? Well, thanks, guys. I think, first of all, Instagram, um, the, the North Idaho Life is my handle. And then on Facebook is just Adriana Pickard. So, and thanks, you guys, for having me. I so appreciate it. It's been fun. <laughs> I, can't meet, I can't wait to meet you one day in person, Adriana. You are my tribe. Honestly, yeah. relent, relentless kindness, you're, you're my tribe. I love people like that. So oh, thank you so much, Adriana. <laughs> And we hope to see you really soon. And, and congratulations on your all of your success. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys.